Uh, so how does it feel, you know, to kind of be that guy? It was a, a clutch situation. You guys, the block needed to win this right, game, you know, right. to get this World Series. So how does it feel to be it's, out there on, on the bump and, and, and deliver your team a win? Oh, man, I was excited. You know, um, I just wanted to give this team a win. I just told them, you know, just give me, just give me one run. You know, and we'll be okay. And uh, yeah. I just embraced the challenge, you know, Friday <laughs> night on the lights. I mean, heck of a crowd. And, uh, you know, I just, it was, it was awesome. Has it been a good fall for you this far? You know, every year you're kind of making improvements. Are you seeing that? that right, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, evaluating myself, I think I did all right. You know, I can always always do a lot better. You know, there's always things to improve on. So, uh, yeah, but overall, I think I did pretty well, you know. I um, just got to keep working, you know, hopefully get a little better. Eric, congratulations on the win. Uh, coach said inside in the, the dugout club meeting that you said you specifically wanted to pitch on Friday. Yeah. And showed right. a lot of confidence in yourself, kind of wanted to be out there in front of the fans. Talk about that. Uh, do you embrace kind of stepping up to the top of the rotation this year? Oh, absolutely. You know, that's that's something I've always wanted since I've been here, you know, day one. Um, you know, I, you know, actually, I was talking to Coach about it earlier this week, and, uh, and I was like, look, I don't care what team I'm on, I'm throwing Friday night. And he just started laughing. So, yeah, but it's something I've always wanted, and, uh, and I was glad I was able to do it. Where has your game kind of maybe come around more this year? Have you improved maybe a certain pitch, or where have you gotten better? Yet? A lot of confidence. Um, it's something I didn't have, you know, last year, and it was a struggle, definitely. But, um, you know, over the summer, I came back from the Cape and played here, so I just try to work on my confidence, you know, and, uh, you know, keep working during, uh, you know, fall and all that. So doing that, it helped, it helped me a lot. So. Well, Eric, congratulations on a big victory. We'll Thank talk you. to you again soon. Awesome. I appreciate it. We're here with Coach Klosterman. Coach, three championships in a row, your third consecutive Black and Gold World Series. Talk about how that feels. It feels pretty good. It, it really does. You know, this year it was a little bit different. We had 24 new recruits on campus, and, uh, you know, it was good to see these guys come out and compete for the last couple days. And, uh, you know, everybody played well, and uh, it was good to see these guys get after it for a little bit. Were you attempted a little bit to get in that dog pile there at the end of the game? No, nah, I, didn't, nah, I told them they could they could do whatever they wanted to, and uh, they, they had that set up, and they were ready to do it, and uh, they had a pretty good time with it. Coach, talk about the job Eric Skogan did. You kind of had him in your back pocket a little bit. You knew he was going to pitch Friday. Uh, just talk about the job he did as kind of as the leader of this pitching staff. You know, that, that is, that's exactly right. You know, Scoglin always wants the ball on Friday nights. Um, to be honest with you, I think I, uh, I think I let him pitch on Friday nights for three straight years. So he's, uh, he's been my go-to, and, uh, you know, this year we're looking for the same thing out of him. You work with the infielders throughout the season. You got to see lots of infielders this week. Who, who impressed you the most? <laughs> you know, I, I did. Uh, you know, a lot of those guys played well this weekend. Um, you know, one guy in particular was Brooks Morgan. He swung the bat really well. Um, you know, there was a couple nice plays by Dylan Moore at short stop for the opposing team and and then again you know we had a couple double plays tonight ourselves with uh, with Brett Gordon and Tommy Williams but uh, you know overall it's a good group uh, there's a lot of a lot of inter team competition right now and uh, it's been fun to watch these guys compete and get after it. Coach, uh, Jojo Woods is on base four times tonight how important is that to you being able to win? That's, that's huge. You know, when, when you put somebody in that leadoff spot, that's what you want out of them. Uh, you want somebody that's going to go out there and work the counts uh, and uh, get deep into the uh, counts. And, uh, you know, he did that tonight, uh, put himself on base, and uh, gave us an opportunity to win a ball game. Coach, you had Matt DiOrio out there, four RBIs, just a true freshman, uh, kind of playing out of position a little bit in left field, uh, but but he kind of went out there and really swung the bat well from the left side. Talk about the job he did. You know, Matt, Matty is a, a very interesting uh, freshman. He uh, he swings the bat really well, and uh, it's one of those things, if you hit, we're going to find a spot in that lineup for you. And uh, he, he's done nothing but work hard since he showed up on campus, and uh, his bat really has stood out. We wrapped up fall practice today with the Black and Girl World Series. It's kind of talking about the progress made this fall. Was it a, a good fall for your program? I think it was a good fall for our program. Uh, the biggest challenge was obviously when you have 24 new players of 36 guys in the roster is making sure they understand what the expectations are every single day. And it's not just on the field, it's on the field and off the field. Uh, and I think they did a very good job of that throughout the fall. Eric Skogel obviously pitched a very good game tonight. Has he kind of stepped to the forefront to possibly be that number one guy for you uh, going into next season? Yeah, I think he has. And, and uh, I think he's done a great job, really. Every outing that Skog went this fall, he got better. He really did, and he's doing some things. You know, he's always had some success, but he's doing some things now pitching-wise on a more consistent basis, uh, kind of with the game within the game. You know, a lot of his fastballs are in the bottom half of the zone, uh, which is really important, especially with his height and creating a down point. So Skog has definitely uh, done a good job uh, throughout the fall. Talk about uh, just a couple other returning pitchers as well. Zach Favre and Spencer Davis 
two of the other uh, returners along with Skoglund that also did really well this week. Uh, just talk about the importance of them being able to show these new guys the ropes and kind of be those leaders in the rotation. Yeah, they definitely do. I mean, yeah, listen, a lot of the credit in the transition so far goes to those older guys. I mean, they have 24 new players. Uh, in order for, for everything to run smoothly, it's not just about the coaches, it's about the kids internally doing the right things. And we've got a lot of great guys and great kids doing the right things. And listen, Spencer Davis certainly you know pitched a, a great game the other day, you know, through 40-something pitches and four innings. And, you know, we need Spencer to have a better year this year, too. And that's the thing we talked about at the end of last year. Everybody that came back, they need to be better. And they need to be better than what they were. And uh, regarding those two guys, I certainly think that both Spence and Skoga uh, did a nice job this fall. Uh, you know, Favre's been working on some things. Zach Favre has worked really, really hard um, during this fall. He really has. He's doing some things that create a little bit more consistency in his game. Really, fastball command's a big part of it. Um, but uh, Zach did a nice job, too. So I feel good about all three of those veteran guys. What's one or two things you learned about your team this week that you maybe didn't know heading into the well, I think, you know, when you look at our team right now, I mean, just think it's, for me, a strength of our team after the fall is I think we're going to play defense very well. I really do. I'm really pleased with our depth on the infield. I mean, we've got a lot of them, and uh, we've got a lot of left-handed hitters, but I think our defense uh, is going to be very good. I'm not sure who's going to play where, I can tell you that, um, but I can tell you that our defense is going to be very good. I've got a lot more speed in the outfield. Uh, so those guys have done a great job. So I think defensively it's, it's very good. I think the area that is clear to me that we need to get better is we need to throw a lot more strikes. I mean, we got a lot of work to do between now and uh, the second weekend in February. As a pitching staff as a whole, we have to get better and we have to throw more strikes. I mean, everybody does. And listen, I, and I understand it comes with time, but we've got to do a lot better job in that. So I think going into that, uh, I feel very good about it, but I definitely think defensively uh, is going to be a plus for us. Got to get better on the mound overall throwing strikes. And we got to figure out our catching situation. And you talked about Spencer Davis a moment ago and the way he had a nice season last year as a closer. Is, is he going to be a starter? I mean, I know you started him this week. Is he probably going to be a starter once uh, February rolls I think after, you know, you know, first, there's there's no spots guaranteed yet. I mean, there's there's no starters, there's no closers. Everybody's got to go out there and earn a job. You know, we still got a long way to go. But I think that Spencer is definitely somebody that's in the mix for, for a starting spot. And uh, I, I think he can do it. I do think he can do it. He's just got to be consistent. The big thing for Spencer is that he's got to stay down zone with his fastball. He's got a great arm. I mean, he pitches 88 to 92, somewhere in that range. You can see he's athletic and he's got everything you need, but he's got to stay down zone with his fastball. And I thought he did a better job of that as the fall went on. So yes, I mean, as his off-speed pitches and develop, he's got a chance to be in the rotation for us. How different is it when you have so many new guys, you know, 20 plus new players? Is it almost like that 2010 season? I know a lot of them were freshmen. It's a little bit different. You got freshmen, you got some junior college transfers. Uh, as far from a leadership standpoint, who are those guys? Is it a guy like Eric Skoglund mm -hmm. that's kind of showing the way? How does that kind of mesh together when you have so many new players? Yeah, I mean, as, as a coach, you got to adapt year to year. I mean, you do. You've got to hold true to what your principles are and what you believe in, and nothing's going to change as far as that goes. We all know we didn't have the year we wanted last year, but uh, we cer I certainly know what it takes you know, to get to get the job done, and a big part of that is the internal leadership, like you said. You know, there's not, there's not really, I don't think there's a specific person. I think all of those guys have done a great job. They really have, and they deserve a lot of credit, those returning guys. And you look on our staff, yeah, you mentioned it, you know, Scoglin and Davis and Zach Farb and T. Mart, those guys, have, and they've all done a great job and obviously James you know Vasquez and, and Jojo have done a great job from a leadership standpoint and you know and Tommy Williams too I mean look at the fall you, you look at you for me one of the guys if not the guy that has made the biggest jump uh, since last year is probably Tommy Tommy had a great fall he's stronger he's faster uh, and I have really been pleased with Tommy I really have he's done a great job this fall coach talk about the crowd tonight uh, a lot of people here maybe one of the most highly attended black and gold World Series games we've ever had uh, uh, that's really what you wanted to kind of be able to showcase your team in front of a lot of fans and maybe make some new fans, get some new people out here and, and when the spring rolls around. I thought tonight was awesome. I mean, in, in my five years here, six years now, that's the most people we've ever had for a black and gold game. And I don't know what the official attendance was, but uh, I know this much. It was awesome. There aren't many schools in the country that are going to have, you know, between 500 and 1,000 people out for a uh, fall scrimmage game. And that's what we had tonight. And it was awesome. I mean, that was awesome. What, what a beautiful night. A couple hundred people, a lot of people out there tailgating you know what I mean on the fence and uh, it, it was awesome so I really appreciate everybody coming out and, and certainly hope they enjoyed the experience but it really was a great night but I told our guys that I was kind of walking around the dugout and a lot of the, get the first year guys in the program I says and that's it you know you find out that's one of the reasons you play this game some of the guys on our team have never played in front of this many people really 
some of these junior college kids, high school kids, doesn't matter, they haven't played in front of 500 to 1,000 people in their life. And the lights are on, it's a first big game, so there's a lot that goes into it. But for all the fans that came out, really appreciate it. And we'll obviously want to continue that throughout the spring. It's good to see some of his former players come back. I saw a lot of faces through the years. Guys, they even go back far as Drew Butera and Dee Brown and some of the more recent players as well. I'll tell you, I'm glad you brought that up. We had a dugout club. Uh, tonight's a kickoff of our dugout club for the new year. And we invited all the alums and supporters. And I said that when I was in there in the dugout club. I said, I want to really make special notes to all the alums that came back, you know, from, from whether they played for me or they played prior to that. It was awesome. You're right. See, all those guys. And uh, we're in the tradition room. And, I mean, there must have been, you know, half a dozen guys that are on the wall. All that that were in there tonight. You're right. And you talk about you know Chris Duffy and Shane Brown and Joe Rogers and you know I mean all these guys, Talladay, Friedrich, all these guys were there and, and the Russells were here and Dee Brown. I mean and yeah Drew Butera. I was texting with Drew you know earlier today. So to have those guys back means a lot. It means a lot to our program. It means a lot to these kids. You know they hear the names, they see their pictures, uh, they know what they did in their legacy. So I, I, I want to have those alums around this program as much as possible. It's great and really appreciate it. I know the official schedule will be released I guess in a few weeks. But can you touch on that a little bit in the inaugural year of American Conference play. Some teams you've played before, obviously, some yeah. new teams in there. I know Florida State is coming back here, right, for a couple of games, and then there's a road trip to Ole Miss. Can you kind of touch on that 2014 schedule? Our schedule's really good. You know, I mean, think from an RPI standpoint, it's, it's going to be great. You're right. Uh, we open up with Sienna. We always have them down, enjoy playing those guys. Second weekend, we've got a tournament. I mean, for me, it's one of the best tournaments in the country. Uh, Ohio State, Citadel, and Oklahoma are all coming down. So, I mean, that's going to be an awesome weekend. Uh, following weekend after that, we go to Ole Miss for three. They're returning the trip next year in 2015, so we're excited to have a home and home with those guys. Uh, and then you're right, we've got Florida State here for two games, and I mean our schedule is fantastic, and obviously we're excited about you know going into the American Conference, which is going to be great. I mean it's it's a lot of our you know Conference USA opponents, as everybody knows, and we're adding Louisville, who's you know an outstanding baseball program, and UConn. You know went to a Super Regional a couple years ago, so from a baseball standpoint, it's going to be very good. And you're right, you know last year it was a uh, long story short, but last year was the first year of the new RPI in college baseball, and and you learn a lot from that. You know you got to win. You know I don't need an RPI to tell me that. Okay, I got to win to get to the postseason, but um, you know it's a big difference. It really is. For people who don't know, it's similar to college basketball. You get rewarded more, greater for a road win as opposed to a home win. So what that's done for us, the adjustment we've made is we've played. We're playing one more road series every single year. We've got some great home and homes with a couple SEC schools already for 2015, 16, and 17. So the schedule is going to continue to be really good. But what that RPI also tells you, you got to win at home. You can't, you can't lose at home. That's a uh, you know that, that's going to hurt your RPI. But overall, it's going to be a great schedule.